The West Coast Trail is potentially the most ambitious, most popular, most iconic trail that British Columbia has to offer. This is everything that you're gonna need to prepare and to survive hiking the West Coast Trail. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my loneliness, I guess that ignorance is bliss. The West Coast Trail is no trail for the faint-hearted. You're gonna have to book off anywhere from five to eight days to face this 75 kilometer monster of a trail. As we were hiking, we passed several experienced hikers who have done the trail several times. We asked them, what's your number one piece of advice that you have to offer? And so many times they said, pack as light as possible. For reference, our heaviest pack on our team was probably somewhere around 40 something pounds, I'm pretty sure where they were talking about having packs closer to 20 pounds. Every ounce makes a difference. So choose wisely what you bring. Now, I'm not really one to spend a lot of money on good gear, but I would say everything that I spent on this trip was well worth it. And there are some recommendations that I would say are must haves when you're picking your gear. The two biggest recommendations I would say is gaiters and hiking poles. These are the two items that I probably questioned the most while I was packing, but I was probably most thankful to actually have them while I was hiking. Never underestimate the power of a hiking pole. It can help you find how deep these mud puddles are, or it can help you cross difficult terrain and balance, as well as take the weight off of your back and shoulders. Gaiters are used specifically for when trekking through the mud. They're designed to keep the mud out of your socks and shoes so that you can keep moving forward. And I'm not joking when I'm saying there's gonna be mud on the trail. I was warned about the mud, but I had no idea what to expect. Now, we went on one of the hottest weeks of the summer and still the mud was knee deep at some points. You're gonna to wanna to be prepared to face the mud. And so several people told us that it's much easier, faster, and honestly, just more fun if you face the mud head on. You may want to avoid and dodge and try to figure your way around the mud, but it's gonna be more exhausting for you as you're hiking. And honestly, it's really more enjoyable to just be able to go right through it. Okay, one last preparation tip, and that's separating your food into individual day rations. By portioning out your food one day at a time, you'll know exactly how much food you can eat each day without worrying about having enough or too much. You don't want to hike out with food and be carrying that extra weight the whole time. And yet you also don't want to feel like you're starving yourself. It will help you so, so much if you don't have to worry about any of that while you're on the trip and you can just focus on eating your food. So when it comes to actually hiking the trail, here's some important information you should probably know. The West Coast Trail first opened in 1973, nearly 50 years ago. And to be honest, it hasn't aged super well. Well, I'm not too sure what they do for upkeep, but the conditions of the trail are the worst that they've ever been. As you hike along the trail, you'll come across a series of ladders, boardwalks, bridges, and cable carts. A lot of the wood that has been used to build the these camp. things is aged and falling time. apart. Some so much so that the wood was soft enough that I could put my hiking pole right through it. Now, if there's ever something like this on the trail, they'll have an alternative safe way around it. For example, one of the ladders was falling apart so badly that they literally just put a rope down the side and you could climb down this rope and rappel down. So there'll always be a safe alternative. But just so you know, this does result in some injuries. About 80 to 100 or so hikers have to be evacuated every year as a result of hiking injuries. That's an evacuation about every day and a half on the trail. There's about 7,500 people who use this trail every summer. Across 50 years, you do the math, that's a lot of people. So you gotta be careful when you're on the trail. Of course, the trail isn't the only thing that results in hiking injuries. Of course, you do have to be aware about wildlife. Bear sightings are not that uncommon. 
In fact, there were so many sightings at one of the campsites that they actually had to close down some of the campsites for camping altogether. Some were so bad that we weren't even allowed to stop there for lunch. But I'm not going to go over all the nitty gritty details about how to deal with a bear. As long as you're with your group, you should be pretty safe and they'll teach you everything that you need to know to make sure that you stay safe while you're on the trail. Okay, here's one of the big things I really wish that I did know before I went on the hike. And that's Tide. So we're at the first campsite and the tides are going to be really high tonight because it's a full moon. So everyone is panicking, trying to build little walls so that our tents don't get wet. So we're, we're up, which took a bunch of people really high. We're really hoping that we don't wake up soaking wet in the middle of the night, but we'll see. Everybody's mad dashing. The tide is just like wild. Watch out, that's a big one. <laughs> Holy. Okay, so we are currently moving our tent because the tide is coming up so high and there's nowhere for it to fit. So we are now sleeping under the stars tonight. Wish us luck. <laughs> it's 5.10. We spent the night outside. Yeah. <laughs> wow. West coast, best coast. <laughs> we were nowhere near prepared enough to realize that the water would actually come past the logs right to where our tent was. You're going to want to make sure that you can get as high as you physically can. Honestly, if there are campsites within the trees, I would just go for that. It's going to be your safest bet. Throughout the trail, there are several points where you can choose to either take the forest trail or the beach trail. Often, we chose to do the beach trail because we thought it would be prettier and easier. Easier isn't really a thing on this trail. To be honest, probably the most difficult aspect of it was the mental battle. Continuing the desire to keep going and keep moving forward plus keeping your head up actually became really difficult. The constant weight of the pack on your back, your shoulders, and your hips. And often when you're hiking the West Coast Trail, it's gonna be pretty rainy, which results in tough hiking. Right. So we're at Michigan Creek. This is the first campground on the coast. We just FaceTime Cass's family to beg them to come pick us up. So we're going home today. See, for us, we were actually pretty fortunate because we got a lot of sun. Also, it's really, really hot. Look at that blazing sun. Look at that. But then that led to potentially feeling heat exhaustion from hiking all day with this heavy pack, and you get where I'm going. Honestly, it was really tough sometimes to keep our heads up and have a good time, even when we're with our friends. We're at kilometer four, because we decided, oh, let's get the long way, to hike out today. Cause we got to our campsite and it was like two, no, yeah, two. And we were like, why stay when we can leave? I was asked, would I do it again? And I had to think about it for a second because I'm kind of a bit on the fence. But I think, you know what? This is an experience I would love to share with other people. Maybe my kid one day. So yeah, I'd do it again. Exactly, and it's not wet at all or slippery, so that's good. I think there were probably times on the trail where all of us felt like we wouldn't be able to finish. But don't let that be your last impression of the West Coast Trail. This trip is a trip that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. If you were given the opportunity, I would say it's totally worth the effort and the work to make it happen. And sure, even though the trail is not in the best condition, and even though it's really tough, and even though I feel like I'm gonna give up sometimes, tough things pay off. They pay off in a way that nothing else can compare to. Update, we're kilometer two. Sweaty, sweaty, definitely sweaty. <laughs> Good morning. 
We are on a gorgeous boardwalk. And um, it's really pretty. We start at 7.48 today. 19K day. Woo! So we just stumbled on wolf tracks. Wolf tracks. So it's snack time. And Kyler is over here. <laughs> Hot girl summer. <laughs> Sleep in my sleep bag. Yeah. Um, your mom loved the message. Hi. We're at. Is this dirt? I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my love. 